My name is Tanya Mills. I am an ed tech coordinator here in SAISD. And I am going to talk a little bit about what we are and what we do before we move on to today's sessions. Um, the ed tech and design departments, the purpose is for us to go ahead and assist teachers, students, campuses, and other departments with cultivating a future ready mindset that will ensure our students have the 21st century skills that they need in order to succeed. In today's presentation, if you are here with me, please uh, feel free to go ahead and interact, ask any questions, suggestions, and such. Um, if I have you go off somewhere to do something, I usually say eyes in Zoom, so that way you know that you have to please return back to where we are in the Zoom itself so that we can go ahead and continue with the subject or topic that we are discussing. If you need to go ahead and write anything down, please feel free to go ahead and do so. If you have any questions that are not related to today's topic, please hold them until the end of the actual session. And I will be glad to go ahead and discuss that with you. So these are the T-test dimensions that this relates to, along with the ISTE standards. So today, what we are going to do is kind of discuss 3D printing and the opportunities that you will have, hopefully, to be able to use this in the classroom with your students. We're going to talk about the steps that we would go through in order to complete a 3D project along with how do we actually design 3D lessons and activities for our kids. So this is a quote that relates to why we do 3D printing and other STEM activities. If you would take just a moment to read through that, uh, we need to make sure that we're always moving ahead when it comes to any type of tech. Um, and that when we move ahead, we always attempt to bring other people with us. If you have that teacher who is across the hall or the one that you work with in the same subject area, topic, and such, when it comes to new tech that you find or that you've learned about, don't keep it to yourself. Make sure that you reach out to them and say, hey, I found a new way to do this, or this is another exciting tool that was that. And what do you think about using this and here and this and that and such, okay? So bring others along with you, especially when it comes to um, using new tools that others are aware of, but they might be intimidated by, okay? So why 3D printing? kind of always start off with this picture right here. And I've actually embedded a video. Um, the link that I put in the chat will give you a link to the copy of the presentation for yourself. So please feel free to go ahead and take this and study it afterwards and share out to others. So the question I usually ask the kids when I show them this picture is, what item in this picture do you believe was 3D printed? And because the video is there, you kind of can see it, but still. Can you see why the item probably would be best to be 3D printed? To actually crochet that and then to stiffen it up would take way too long. The labor, mm. the labor intensity for that would be unreal. Unreal. Exactly. And mm -hmm. if you work in movies, you know that often those items are sullied or dirtied or damaged or, you know, whatever it happens to be, if it's an action movie. Can you imagine having to invest the time and money to have 30 of these on hand? Because mm -hmm. no. usually when they film a scene, it takes 12 to 24 to how many hours that person is actually in that costume. So... By having the items uh, 3D printed, it's just, just a matter of me probably having 40 of them on hand, you know, because you just repeat it over and over again using that printer to have it generate that item over and over again in the same pristine condition as the very first one you ever did. And then I usually tell the kids anything else that you probably see here as far as jewelry can be 3D printed also. Um, we're getting to the point where we can actually have 3D printed clothing and shoes and such. 
So it may be just a few years down the road, if they wanted to have a very cool pair of sneakers, is it necessary for them to go to the store to purchase or even to go online to Amazon to buy? If you have the right setup, you could probably print it at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's a totally different mindset. We are changing the paradigm mm -hmm. from being consumers to being designers and creators by putting these printers mm -hmm. and other items in the hands of our students. So please feel free to go ahead and watch the video. It's very interesting because they talk about the actual designers who is behind the costume creation and the fact that it is a lot easier to use 3D printers in order to do it. And I'm gonna go ahead. So if we can kind of take a look at this chart together. Um, uh, Marta, are you actually in our district or are you in a different district? No, I'm at, no, I'm at Northside. Ah, okay, awesome, awesome. So this chart right here is kind of how we're laying out the approach for STEM STEAM within our district, okay? So there are different stages that we wanna lead our campuses and our departments through in order to make sure that STEAM is integrated as a model throughout. It doesn't, um, the introductory starting point is fine, but we really wanna make sure that our campuses progress along until they reach the uh, advanced model. And I think 3D printing is a way that you can kind of get people into the mindset of using STEM and maker spaces and tinkering mm -hmm. and all of the fun things kids like to do with their hands to the point where it's just a seamless integration, the same process that we wanna have with our devices that we have in the hands of our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can see this becoming like with, with the littles with pre-K as part of the art. Yes. Yeah. In fact, that's one of our yeah. big things that we're turning to. And let me see if my camera happens to be on. because so I want to show you guys something right here that we are, or at least I am, printing out too many of. So um, if you search online, you'll actually find something called a Z block. Let me put this in front of me. And what this is, is a blank 3D object that you can print out. So the nice thing about 3D is the fact that if I print out the larger size of this, it stands the reason why I would not print out a smaller version. And it also stands the reason why I would not print out the tiniest version of all that you probably barely see. The reason behind the actual Z block is that you are able to take this and have your students design on top of it. So they can put a costume on it. They can paint it. They can put uh, 3D clay on it. They can do whatever they want to to make a character. Um, it opens up the door for them to design it so it looks like Superman or they can make a Pokemon out of it. They just have an unlimited option of how they want to make this their own. Because it is 3D printed, I don't mind if you do two of them because I can print out another five overnight. Come in the next day, it's there. Hand it to a student, student gets to do what they need to do with it. So that's the advantage of having the opportunity to come up with a model such as this, a blank, and then just give the students the opportunity to make and design. So this is how this would kind of relate to our visual art piece, where we want our students to go through and create a visual art item. It may take a while for students to be able to create and craft something that has dimension. Um, I imagine if a student has clay or Play-Doh, they could do the same. But just by providing them the blank, it kind of cuts out that hesitation as to miss, I can't make that. It doesn't. Use this. This is your blank. Do what you want with him. Um, we gave this to our specialists and they spent an hour crafting. 
and then tearing it off. I don't like that. And then crafting it again. And then, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And then, you know, it's light enough, it's cheap enough, take it home, give it as a gift, come back, ask me for three more. Okay. Questions about that piece though. Are the materials used limited to this type of printer available? Yes. In fact, we will talk a little bit about that piece as to what are you getting yourself into once you go down the road of getting the 3D printer in your room, okay? So if there aren't any questions concerning the um, model, so each district would be different depending on the people that you have who are there to guide you through the process of STEM STEAM. It is always good to have this as a background uh, to the conversation that you have with others so that they know exactly what the expectations are when it comes to year one, year two, year three, or however you wanna go ahead and have this laid out. So I have um, some little bit of information about the benefits of 3D printing. Uh, part of it, and this is the upper right-hand corner, is the fact that we want to be able to empower our students to express themselves uh, creatively. Uh, one of the things we want to start doing them is to, uh, doing with them is to get them into the mindset of doing computer-aided design, which kind of tends to lend itself to coding, math, science, technology, essentially STEAM. Okay, so we will have the opportunity today to go ahead and use a CAD program to, de to uh, design something. So you guys can kind of see exactly how that works. I have um, another part right here, which I also think is very important is because when the students or yourself, because I would love for you to take the opportunity during the summer, to kind of try this out yourself, is that you now get to start thinking about spatial intelligence when it comes to crafting items either in 2D or 3D. I can tell you that I did not pass this test, probably got one out of 25, but they're out there. And if you would like to be able to kind of take it yourself, just kind of search for that term. But we want students to be able to think and three to four dimensions. And 3D printing is a great way to do it because you have to design that way in order to do your Tinkercad or your doodles that you're going to do. Okay, and we have one more person coming in. Let me bring that person in. So spatial intelligence. It's not just for people who are doing math, science, and engineering. It is part of it a very important part of it, but it's also a great way to introduce this concept to your kids by first having them complete some of these projects or puzzles. These are some of the opportunities for careers in 3D printing. Um, I have links associated with each of these. So when you have your own copy of the presentation and let me go back and paste in not only the link to the presentation itself, but also the sign in. So please make sure that you guys sign in. Um, this is one way that I can actually get your email addresses to send you any type of resources that I come across that hopefully will be useful to you. So for the careers in 3D printing, we have product design, just like we saw that picture of the Black Panther costume, that is part of product design, fashion design, architecture. They are now 3D printing houses. So what used to take, um, I don't know, how long did it take for them to build my house? Seemed like years, probably was about a month and a half. But with the proper materials, such as a clay-like base, a cement in other words, you can go through and set up huge machine that will go ahead and do the outer side area of the walls of the house itself in less than two or three days, just depending on the size of the house itself. And of course the design of the house. 
So you can imagine that if we have the need for houses for those in low income or no houses at all, then by 3D printing these houses, it takes out the equation of cost. You can print one of these, um, an example that's in that article for around $5,000. Because what you're really printing or what you're paying for is the materials themselves. Okay. And there are some other items that you can look at at your leisure. So this video right here kind of shows exactly how 3D printing works. I am going So this right here is the actual process. So quickly going through the process so you can kind of see exactly what the expectations are is that you would come up with the idea of what you want to do. Then you would actually build it inside of a 3D modeling CAD program. Then you would take whatever that design happens to be and put it into a slicing software program that usually comes along with the actual printer. The software will slice, which means that it separates this into a code that the printer understands. And then you would just basically upload it to the printer. And then you would pick out the filament, which is the kind of string that goes along with what you want it to look like. Um, for this one right here, I actually went on to Amazon and typed in pink filament. And this is a pink satin filament. It's nice and shiny, but there are thousands of different ones that you can choose. So you put the filament on the printer, and then you go ahead and let the printer print the model. You remove it and you are done. Routine. So if I wanted to do this at home, I usually get home, Go ahead and do what I need to do. It prints overnight. When I wake up, I have a gift, a gift from my printer. And then I just go about my day, okay? Questions about the process right here that you see? No? So usually what our teachers do is that if we have a lot of these that we need to print for our kids, we try to pile as many as we can on the actual um, build plate that's on the printer. Start it, let it print overnight, come in the next day, you have all the little goodies that your kids actually made, and then you're able to go ahead and print those or hand those out to them. So it does print overnight if you need to. These are some of the printer options that are out there. There are certain different types. Um, for me, the type that I have at home is the one toward the end, where it's actually a box with a glass cage around it. Uh, it's a nice way to make sure that things stay where they need to stay. Though I do have a friend who actually has the one that you see right here at the very beginning where there's no cage at all. This is open. The advantage of the first one is the fact that she can build things bigger than I can because mine's restricted by the actual dimensions of the box it happens to be in. So if she wants to go ahead and print out something that's three feet tall, if it's possible, she can do it because there's nothing to stop the actual print at the very top, except for how high it goes. Does that make sense? So usually what we have in classrooms is either or. You may want to have one that's open or you may want to have one that's closed. Um, one of the things that you probably want to keep in mind, though, is the type of filament that you're using. So I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures. This is actually her classroom when she was teaching. So jealous, so very jealous. She had a uh, smart board over there. She had all sorts of little bits and pieces and she had two 3D printers that the students were actually in charge of. So they would go up to the station, they would go through whatever they need to to make it and they would print it. And they were in charge of actually replacing the filament and then taking it off of the actual build plate when it was done. So can you imagine in your classroom if you had this type of setup and that you went through the process of showing your kids that to be a designer, there are certain responsibilities. 
but you chart your own course. And part of that is that you're responsible to take care of this area, period. And then I just walk away. Okay. Questions about the setup that she had? No? How I want expensive some. is the filament? Like, how much will one of those build? Uh, spools? Yeah. Uh, you can go on to Amazon. And I usually had, uh, it depends on whether or not it's a plain flat color. You can get one for about $18. Mm -hmm. Um, the really nice, expensive one, the rainbow one that has all the rainbow colors in it, mm -hmm. around $24, 24 dollars 25 So they last a long time. Um, I've been printing larger versions of this, smaller versions of this. Mm -hmm. In fact, everyone I run into gets one of these for a present. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still going. In fact, I have it printing right now at wow. home when I'm at work. So, and I thought I heard you mention like that the they set it up to build overnight. Is it building more than one? Yes. Overnight? So it's not just building one student. If there's more things put in there, it builds all of it. Correct. All of them. So in the slicing software that you use, you have a plate, which is the bottom area right here, where the items actually sit on. Mm -hmm. So you can actually design for the slicing program to have multiple items on the same bill plate at the same time. Okay. So when I print these, this size right here, I don't print just one by itself. I print eight. Oh, okay. So I have eight of them. So it goes by, does one, goes to the next one, and so on until it does all of the layers. Okay. Um, this one right here, which is a size up, but smaller than the bigger one, I print four because okay. that's the size that the, you would have four on the actual plate mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. I don't have one, but in our district, they're putting some in the libraries and I work in a library. So I'm hoping that I, I wanted to see what it's about because if I do get one, I'd like to have a little bit of knowledge. Sure. Uh, that makes perfect so, sense. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So as you go through, um, this is another uh, view of the other printers that she had, where it is possible for you to build one from scratch. So you could buy a kit and then have a group of students put the kit together. Can you imagine the power of knowledge and ownership that comes from that when the students build their own 3D printer instead of having one that comes out of a box? So that's another consideration that you might want to uh, research and invest in. So all of these built by students, awesome. So I'm just gonna fly through these real quick when it comes to the design thinking, a uh, certain order, make sure that you have the opportunity to have your students feel, imagine, do, and then share. So this is a framework that applies to designing. And we only have 15 minutes left. So I'm going to kind of go through this right here. What makes a good 3D printing project? Of course, you have this presentation. So please feel free to come back and review this in more detail. Um, start simple. Just make sure that it's tied somewhat to your curriculum. Math, science and engineering, this is perfect for. Reading, language arts, social studies, also perfect for, okay? If you were to print one of these out or have your kids do it, and then I want you to go ahead and design this as a character in the book that we just read. Or I want you to go ahead and design this as an historical figure. So there's a lot of things that kind of weave themselves in together in order to do this. Okay, and there are multiple objects. This right here is very important. Uh, just take a second to read that, if you would. Let's 
So now that I gave you a moment to think about this, what do you think? Is it a bad thing to necessarily use your printer for trinkets? The reason why I ask is because we're about to do that, but go ahead. <laughs> no, that's how, that's how children learn. They discover, they explore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it has to be an, an interest, something that's connected to them. Exactly. They have to buy into it. So having the opportunity to have them print out something to give home to mom or dad or brother or sister. I gotcha. You like this now, don't you? You want to go on and you want to print something else out for another person. So that's the way that we bring them into the 3D printing and the concept behind them of designing. So, but what you don't want to get into the um, process of always having to print out something that has not been vetted and has not been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It has not had the opportunity for the students to redesign. So the first thing you come up with, first time you did it, yes, I printed it out for you. The second time, I want to see some progress in this, complexity in this, okay? So it looks good, but let's think about how we can change it around just a little bit so it's more versatile, so it's more, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, it'll come to me, but you want them to give, give them the opportunity to redesign, rethink, redo before you print out the second one they give you or even the third one. Also give them the opportunity to fail. So if you print something out and it's supposed to do a certain thing and it doesn't work, that's okay. We can go ahead and print something out again if we need to. So it's, you work around it. You work around it, you lead, and you learn as you do it. I have this program called Doodle 3D that I really want you guys to be able to go in and test out. This is the first step that we usually take with our students when it comes to introducing 3D printing to them. The first thing they need to do is create, design, and then we print. So I'm going to take this link and drop it in the chat for you all to click on if you are not there already. This is online, it is free. It also works on iPads somewhat, okay? So I know that you're going to click on it, it will open up in another tab. What I would like for you to do is to go ahead and use the items that you see at the very bottom of the screen to create something here in 2D. As you create that object, it then appears on the right-hand side in 3D. On the right-hand side, you're able to go ahead and adjust and change the view. So you can kind of see what it looks like from all angles. You can also select with the arrow on the left to be able to manipulate the size with and other dimensions of the object on the right. Take a few moments and go ahead and play with that. Okay, uh, let's have you guys come back to the Zoom and let's have you unmute and tell me what you thought about the program. What did you think? I like the, that it showed on the right, the 3D image. And uh, I went to up to the part that I was about to pour that this like uh, the, the band shoes looking, but I couldn't pour in a 3D model yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anyone else want to share? It, my, my district is blocking the website, so I couldn't get it. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear this that. Is, this is like Cricut in 3D. It is. Uh, if you have a Cricut, in fact, I would encourage you that not only if you're doing 3D printing, if you have a Cricut at home, bring the Cricut in too. 
because the cricket still has that concept of being able to design and then have an item printed out for you. Uh, for the cricket, it's 2D because you're doing a flat surface. The next step is 3D. Also with the cricket, I don't know if you guys have heard about a glow forge. Anyone? Uh, the glow forge is a cricket on steroids that will actually cut metal. So I have a friend who actually has a glow forge at home and she does jewelry earrings with patterns that you can't do by hand. She designs them on the computer. She puts the material into the glow forge um, and it just cuts it for her. So she has like uh, items that look like lace and the glow forge has actually done it for her. So that I do not work for glow forge, but I am glad to take one if they want me to. It's just a fantastic, fantastic uh, item. But uh, concepts, it's I get to see what traditionally we do as 2D. You draw it, you see it, but I get to pivot and move and see that it has height and weight. I get to use the items here at the bottom to change the way it looks and such. But I will tell you, after teaching this for so many years, Actually, it's been a couple of months. The first thing the kids do is I go to the shape, I find a heart, and I type on the heart, mom or dad. <laughs> so when we print this out for them, 95% of the ones that they first do for the very first time is this heart with their name on it or heart with something else on it. Okay. So I would say that if you want to go ahead and start them off with design concepts, that they first start off with this, but they expand their uh, skill set by doing other things too. So we want them to kind of think about the 2D and 3D translation. Yes, exactly. It does give them the chance to um, practice because it is something that's online. They can get to this at any time. So the introduction of it's great, but the ability for them to have this 24 seven to just create is even better. Uh, you had a question, Lisa? Oh, go ahead. The moment uh, I added this checker pattern, uh, Heart shape become a 2D and I can't put it back on the 3D. Oh, you can't? No, could I share my screen? Uh, yes, yes. Would be glad to let you do that. Let me go ahead and stop my share mm -hmm. and let me go ahead and make sure that you are able to share for yourself. Yes, go ahead and do so. Mm like uh, it become a 2D. Originally before this, mm -hmm. it was 3D. But the moment I added the, this checker design, it become a 2D. So the actual checker design, uh, whenever you do any graphic design, mm -hmm. means it's invisible. That's what it stands uh -huh. for. So what we usually do with this is let's have you go ahead and draw a heart again. And this time we want to make sure that you use the bucket to put in color okay. so it has a fill. Okay. You then can draw another shape and then change it to transparency, which is what that is. And it okay. will cut out um, if placed on top of a solid fill. So um, that way you can have a heart with a circle inside. Um, so the heart has the fill color the mm -hmm. circle inside has the checkerboard or the transparency option, and then it will cut a hole in it. Okay. okay. So complicated, it's not easy. <laughs> it steps it up a model. So with the students. Time consuming. <laughs> which they love, which I hope you guys have the chance to do too. The next step is, is when they have the hearts with the names, Ask them to go ahead and make it into a keychain or pin it, which means you have to actually attach a circle that is hollow to it. 
so that something can go through it. And that steps it up a model, a little step beyond just the standard. Mm -hmm. So I have, let me go ahead and share the screen again. So we had the opportunity to try out the Doodle 3D. Um, once again, this is a free open source. There are directions in the presentation as to how to use it. That video right there will tell you more in detail exactly what the program is and how it works. Uh, the next couple of videos or uh, slides here kind of talks about the process of what do I do after? I've made it, I have my 3D printer, it has the filament in it, what do I do now? The next step is, is to export what you've done from the actual program and then import it into what is called the slicing program that goes along with the 3D printer. So each 3D printer has a slicing program that kind of looks different from the other. All you really have to get used to is exactly how does it work? One being is that the item that you've created will actually appear down at the very bottom and a model of what the build plate looks like. So it's mentioned before, um, let's say that my students have gone through and they've designed keychains. I don't have to just print one at a time. What I can do is to import all of the keychains they've done into the build plate if there happens to be enough room for it. So I can print 20 things at a time. The program itself will also give you the ability to go ahead and reduce an item in size. So if a student has done a keychain that's this big, I'm not printing out something that large, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> what I do is reduce the size so it's probably about that big. And if it's a good design, I'll maintain the way that it looks. So then I can have more items on the plate at once. Questions about that right there? No? So as mentioned here, once you add it, you can go ahead and change the scale, the size. You can move it over so you can add additional items to the build plate. Um, the way that 3D printers work is that it will work on a coordinating plane, three axis, um, height, width, and the other one that I'm forgetting is, mm, so it has an X, Y, and Z. So Z refers to the layers and materials laid down by the printer itself. So each and every time the uh, print head or extruder goes by, it lays a thin layer of melted filament. And then it goes back over the same thing and then back over the same thing. The model that I showed you right here took 14 hours to build. And that's because it has a lot of weight to it. So instead of being hollow, it has some, uh, it has a certain fill pattern in it to give it strength so that if I squeeze it, it's not gonna crack, okay? I could, if I wanted to print this so that the whole interior was solid, but that would take a lot of filament and probably would take seven days. So you try to have to, you have to balance that between the height and width of what you wanna do through scaling the fact that you wanna have the inside have a little bit of strength. So if you want something to print quickly, it's probably smaller. If you want something to print that's larger, it's gonna take time. It's just gonna take time. And this is what you get to play with. All of the lovely colors of the rainbow. So once you have, a company in mind, please note that the 3D printers that we usually have for our campuses come along with um, filament. But when you start thinking about your own personal one, the ones that you wanna replace uh, for your home, find a good company, make sure that company is dependable. And then you just basically order straight from them because you can rely on the quality of the filament that they're going to provide you.
It is 345. And we are at the end of this class. I usually take a little bit longer. I hope I haven't taken too much time. There is one site though that I do want to show you guys, okay? Before I let you go, there's resources here. I do want to go ahead and take you all to Tinkercad real quick. Are you guys aware of Tinkercad? Yes, I have a yes. The reason why I want to show you Tinkercad, because as a teacher, you're able to get in and do an instructor or educator account. Tinkercad is the next step up when it comes to 3D design. This gives you the opportunity to go beyond the doodler, which I love as an intro. But if you really want to have this as part of an actual class or after school activity, Tinkercad is where you want to have your kids start building their 3D models. It's a little bit easier to go ahead and do items that are complex. The great thing about the program itself is that it comes with pre-made items here, like this chicken leg, which most kids just like to have sticking off or out of something just because. But all of these items are here for them to start crafting with. And of course, building from scratch. Okay, you even have people. So start with the doodler, transition to Tinkercad if it's allowed by your district, get a 3D printer, start crafting for yourself, and then just go from there, okay? Please feel free to go ahead and contact me or our department if you need the support on the next steps. I've heard that a lot of you have a printer around you soon. Let us know and we would be glad to go ahead and assist you with how do I do what I need to do once I get it out of the box. Okay. Questions? Any questions before you be in the class? No questions? Okay. So I hope that you guys have at least learned a little bit about 3D printing. Once again, the presentation is here for a resource for you. And my contact information should be in there too, in case you have any questions. Please make sure that you sign in so I can give you credit. And of course, if anything else happens that I come across that I think that will hopefully help you, I will make sure to send that out to you guys too.